welcome to the introduction le lecture of uh, audit insurance one of the most uh, you know i wouldn't say difficult but yes it takes a lot of brains you know it, it eat up it eats up your brain right mostly because it's theoretical so you have to express yourself in words you don't have numbers to work with you know you don't have a lot of numbers to work with but yes uh, it's words that you need to express yourself in the longer questions and uh, you know the shorter questions obviously you have mcqs so it's like you know sometimes students find it very boring because it's all theory mostly i would say 90% theory right the course code is double a and uh, we're studying for the june 21 attempt right <clears throat> now let's look at some details related to the course uh, let's look at some preparation strategy and then we'll finally look at uh, you know the time table and all guys double a basically is the first paper of audit and assurance right in your acc you don't have any uh, paper in the knowledge level that caters to double a all right so it's the first paper that's why and this is one of the reasons why students usually usually at the start find it a bit difficult but as you go along you know uh, i've seen great responses from from some very weak students because you know they took it they took my advice they took it very seriously and they obviously were focused right now what knowledge is required in wa if any let's try to first understand that financial reporting not to some great extent but basic reporting knowledge for example you know certain standards like ias2 ias10 ias37 ias16 ias8 these are certain accounting standards that the examiner expects you to know for your double a exam mainly i would say reason being you studied these standards in your fa financial accounting as well which is which is previously known as f3 right now whatever you learn over here gets carried forward to triple a one of the most technical papers in acca with the lowest passing ratio this is a fact i'm not trying to scare you it's a fact right but again even you know there's there's there is a percentage that passes the exam right it's just the right technique the right strategy and this is what we'll be focusing on the right technique and the right strategy to study double a and to clear the paper in the first attempt if you let's say are a second attempt or if let's say you're attempting the paper the second or third time please unlearn your strategy that you previously used and you need to relearn the strategy that i will tell you so that you can easily pass the paper in this attempt okay this whatever knowledge you get right will certainly help you in your triple a and if you opt for triple a because it's an option right uh at professional level advanced audit assurance is an option right this will help you get exemptions for your icaw and you can obviously this like in the for the corporate reporting paper which is advanced level paper in icaw aaa forms approximately 35 to 40% of the paper okay i have been teaching this paper for the last 4 uh, years now corporate reporting advanced level aaa i have been teaching for the last 6 years all right um so it's like you know it's the whatever you learn in aa is like a huge chunk that will be part of the corporate reporting ultimate level of reporting okay because these two things go hand in hand for especially for an external auditor okay now the syllabus outline basically the i i call it outline because obviously it's just the main things that you know that the syllabus consists of right you have introduction to assurance engagement you have corporate governance you have ethics corporate governance and ethics is something that uh, corporate governance something that you've studied in business and technology as well which is which was previously known as f1 ethics is like part of almost all the papers right planning the audit how you plan the audit because again audit is an activity it's an engagement 
it's a, it's an assignment right whenever it's like a project right whenever you start a project the before you start the execution you need to plan you need to have certain strategies you need to have certain processes which you, which according to which you will basically execute the plan right risk assessment a very crucial area in double a right this risk assessment whatever you learn over here will help you in your sbl right it's a very key area in sbl okay strategic business leader which is basically your professional uh, professional level paper right it's an essential paper it's not an option internal controls and internal audit internal controls whatever you learn over here will help you in your sbl as well okay <clears throat> evidence gathering uh, that obviously i will explain you when i teach you audit insurance what exactly that is right you'll have your procedures you'll have completion review and audit report so these are basically the 10 areas um you know this is my bifurcation so these are the 10 areas that according to which i bifurcate the course and uh, we'll be focusing on these 10 areas to ensure a good pass okay now if i break this down you guys probably know that the auditing world you know works around the international standards on auditing okay so those international standards on auditing i've basically made a list over here of the examinable auditing standards right um, guys don't get confused this is what we'll be looking at like this is the bifurcation of the course that we will look at all right but yes we will come across all these standards that are examinable so you have 200 210 220 230 240 250 60 and basically the series of 200 which is regarding the general audit principles then you have the series of 300 which is basically risk assessment and response you have the series of 500 which is audit evidence you have the series of 600 which is using the work of others and audit conclusion reporting which is a series of 700 right so these are the auditing standards in an exam okay even if you look at the answers of the examiner right you might find let's say um, in the exam answers you uh, you know towards the end of the kit you might find examiners quoting the standards the name and the number for example isa 500 audit evidence asks us to do you know this is this is right examiner as a student you, you know the examiner does not expect you to write this simple as that why because you don't have any marks for it okay uh can you please turn off your video all right now like i said examiner does not expect you to write this right if you're trying if you're struggling with you know remembering the name of the standard the number of the standard you don't you know you don't need to go through all of that because again like i said it won't get you any marks a lot of students try to play smart they quote a number they quote the name and you know whatever they write after that is all wrong literally it's all wrong okay and this is the part which the examiner is concerned about so that area if you're writing it wrong what good is for you to write the name and the number right it's you examiner you know uh, the, the approach that the examiner wants you to take is of not just acting smart but being smart all right if you're being smart about your answers you will certainly get the required marks and you won't have to appear for the paper again and again okay but if you just try to act smart and you're not actually smart with writing your answers five attempts three attempts two attempts you know it's like you can go for the rest of your life the double a at least 10 years right as long as ac allows you okay so that is it now if you look at the exam structure you've got two sections paper is for 100 marks cbe format which is basically in march june september and december right what we are studying for is the june 21 attempt correct you've got two sections section a and section b section a will consist of three ocqs 
OCQs are objective case questions. Objective case questions are basically you, you will get a case, right? And from that case, you will have five MCQs. Okay, from that case, so basically each OCQ, if I break this down over here, let me do it over here. So each OCQ will have five MCQs and each MCQ will be worth two marks. That means the case will be worth 10 marks. And since you will have three OCQs, three cases, this section will be worth 30 marks. That means 30% of the paper, right? Section B is the bigger chunk and it's probably the more difficult one, right? Section B will consist of two CRQ. CRQs are basically uh, constructive response questions, right? Constructive response questions are the long form questions, right? Where you have to type and where you have to calculate and present everything, right? It's not MCQs, you have to type it out, right? Similarly, you'll have, like I said, two CRQs, each will be worth 20 marks, making it 40, right? And then you'll have one CRQ for 30 marks, which is the longest question. 30 marks, so that makes it 100, right? Section B examiner tells you the areas where it will be tested from. There are four main areas. Obviously, I cannot go into the detail of these areas because there's, you know, somewhere in the middle of ordinary assurance. Okay, uh, somewhere in the middle of the syllabus. So as of now, you wouldn't, uh, you know, you, would, you wouldn't know what it, these topics are about. But as and when we go along uh, with the syllabus, I'll obviously explain you all these things, right? So you have audit risk control deficiency and recommendations, key controls and TOCs and audit evidence. Guys, these areas are not just important for the exam. These are practically very important. Okay, like in fact, one of the most important areas, practically when you perform audit, okay, when you get engaged in audit, audit, audit engagement, basically, okay, so it's, it's like, the reason why the examiner is testing, uh, you know, the most difficult part from the most crucial area of the syllabus is because they want you to be prepared for, uh, you know, for your practical audit experience. Okay. Now, these are the resources that I recommend. Obviously, the lectures that we'll cover, including the notes. I'll show you how the notes look like. Uh, so this is like one part of the note, right? You have ethics, you have audit evidence, okay? So you have, you know, audit planning, so, you know, these are all the notes, all right? So obviously you will get these notes, internal controls and test of controls. Okay. So introduction to audit, I just showed it to you, right? So this, like, this is a bunch of notes that you will get. Okay. Book reading, always recommended. Okay. Book reading guys is always recommended. Always, always, always. That means it does not mean that it's compulsory for you to, read, uh, to for you to read the book. Um, you know, it's not like you won't pass, you won't be able to pass the paper if you don't read the book. It's not like that. But yes, for your knowledge, um, you know, obviously my lectures and my notes are more than enough. But book reading is something that you know you need to make it a habit for the rest of your papers as well. Okay. Practice will be done from Kaplan kit. And finally, we will use technical articles to look at certain areas that are examiners favorite areas, because examiners favorite areas are actually the areas that are very important practically as well. And uh, obviously, the examiner tends to test them a lot. Okay, some of the areas I've already mentioned over here, which are which are tested in section B. Okay. Our approach would be pretty simple. We'll do one topic, right? And we'll do the kit practice for that topic. Do the second topic, kit practice. Third topic, kit practice. Fourth topic, kit practice. Yes, there are certain topics, for example, introduction to audit. 
that's one whole topic you don't have questions on that topic like you know isolated questions on that topic because that particular topic might be tested along with ethics or corporate governance or any other particular area of the syllabus right so we need to cover that area of the syllabus to make sure that we are able to do the kit you know efficiently so in that case yes will when we cover the complementary topic will certainly move towards the kit and we'll do the kit practice mainly my focus towards the start of the syllabus will be on section a and once we're like half way through the syllabus not half way through the syllabus in fact 30% uh through the syllabus we'll start with section b practice as well because we need at least that amount of knowledge to start with section b questions okay yes isolated topics like ethics and corporate governance we can easily do section a and section b on it together that won't be a problem all right once we're done with the syllabus which i expect to complete you know around uh, okay this is the date i expect to complete the syllabus after that we'll have a 3 day revision course session each session will be basically for 2 hours right maximum 2.5 hours so that's like 6 hours revision which will be like a narration of all the topics that i've taught you okay so these 10 areas you know these 10 outlines the syllabus that we just looked at will be bifurcated into 3 days right i'll break them down into 3 days right and i'll basically so 3 days is basically you know the way i have the way i put it and the, the way i've done it earlier as well is basically planning execution and completion right so planning is like the initial stage of it execution is like the middle stage where you're actually performing the procedures and you're gathering the evidence and finally you have the completion stage where you're basically reviewing your audit work and you're basically coming up with an audit, audit opinion right so that's the three day revision strategy okay guys remember one thing um the moment i do a topic right i expect you to revise that before we start the new topic before we start the next topic i want you to revise the topic that we just done all right and make sure that you're at par with your revision otherwise it's theoret it's a theoretical paper right you will tend to in in fact you will definitely forget what we've done and which is which will certainly put a lot of burden on you after 15th may that's for sure okay so you have to be at par with your revision okay in the end i'll keep a small mock mock will be obviously it's it will imitate the exam structure but it does not mean that i'll i'll give you a balanced paper i won't give you a balanced paper guys reason being i will give you in the mock i will test the you know the areas that the examiner you know would basically expect you to prepare well like very well so that you can pass a paper those are the areas which are examiner's favorite simple as that okay so examiner will certainly give you a balanced paper yes but i don't expect you to obviously as a trainer i expect you to know the easier areas well enough for you to answer them you know in an appropriate manner but the technical areas the difficult areas a lot of students tend to mess that up which we cannot afford during an exam okay so most of the mock would be around those technical areas okay one last thing and then i can uh, you know i'll be taking some questions these are these are the questions that i have seen in the past students ask the most the paper is mostly theory mostly is theory but you will get some numbers to analyze because that's like part of the uh, you know audit you the base you know the the max level of difficulty you can get uh is to perform ratio analysis 
I cannot explain it right now as to why you need to perform ratio analysis. It's called because you know it's because of a certain standard which is it's called analytical procedures. But yes, you will the max amount of difficulty you will get is to perform ratio analysis and then draw out conclusions based on those ratios you have identified as to whether the business is a going concern or the business doing well or what the procedures that you need to perform. You know all these uh, things related to audit. Okay. What type of options will we get in the exam? Uh, mostly MCQs. Choose one out of four, right? You can also get true and false, which is true or false, right? You can also get choose two out of, let's say you'll get uh, five options. You'll have to choose two. You can also get five options. You'll have to choose three. You can also get four options. You'll have to choose two, right? There could be a whole bunch of combination. But the point is, if you worry about that right now or even later, at the end of the course, you are not applying the right strategy to prepare yourself for the paper. Because this is something, it's, it's, this is something which is not in your control. It's something that the examiner only controls. It is at the examiner's discretion as to what uh, type of questions to give. right? But the point is, it will certainly be from the syllabus that we have covered. Nothing out of the syllabus. It's not, it does not make sense, right? So you just focus on some on the things that you can control, which is acquiring the knowledge in the paper, right? Is book reading important? I told you. I already told you about this. Uh, book reading highly recommended. Not compulsory for you to pass the paper. Simple. Okay. If you skip book reading, focus on the lectures. Focus on my notes. You're good to go. But like I said, I recommend book reading. Okay. What should be the studying strategy while we are still on the lectures? Um, I'll repeat myself. Before the next topic, before the new topic, I want you to revise the previous, uh, previous topic that we just did. Ask any questions you may have and ensure that I answer your questions. All right, ensure that I answer your questions means that, you know, sometimes let's say I have a lot of queries pending, so I might not timely reply to your query, right? It means bugging me, right? Messaging me, right? It does not take more than two messages for you to put out. Uh, I'll, I'll reply within two messages, right? That's like, that's my ratio, okay? Within two messages, max I'll reply. Okay, so if let's say, uh, you message me once, I'm probably busy in, you know, during the class or anything like that. I might ignore your message, but then message me again and I'll definitely reply you. I'll answer your question. Okay. But make sure you do that before we start the next topic. Simple. Okay. Um, the class format will be two live classes and one recorded class. Okay. And the classes will start from 25th March onwards. Like I told you, I expect to finish the course by 15th uh, May 2021, right? And after that, 20th May onwards, so from 20th to 23rd, we'll have um, the revision course, right? And then after two days, we'll have a mock. So like well before, you know, five days before the exam, at least not the exam, uh, because exams are starting, I guess, on the 7th of June, because that's the first Monday, right? Well, let me just confirm and check. Check. Okay, yes. So 7th Monday is the first June, right? So you still have one whole week for June as well to revise towards the end. You know, the end revision is when you just go through the lectures, you, you know, just top of the pages and you're just trying to, uh, you know, make sure that you have everything in your mind. Okay. It does not mean that you open up your books and you go through each and every detail because all the details are already in your head by now. It should be by in your head by now because, and it will be if you follow my strategy. Okay. Before the next topic, revise the previous topic and get all your queries cleared by me you know, no matter what. Okay. So that is it. I would, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me, you can put it on the chat and I'll answer your questions. So we have, 
Any questions, guys? Mohammad? Just, just Jeet, Ben, do you guys have any questions? None? All right. If you come across, let's say, if you have any queries later on, let's say, if you have any questions, you can um, WhatsApp me on this number. So that's plus 9232425200037. Okay. If you have any questions, let's say, after the session, you, you know, come across something you can ask me on whatsapp okay so that's it guys take care goodbye